What's going on guys? Today we are working on our Bronco. We're figuring out where we're going to be putting our engine and we're going to be starting on our chassis. Sounds good. We could uh, cut this thing down the center and these bars underneath we can actually put it back together. All right, when I say we lengthen it like three and a half three and three quarters and, and put the screws back in it with the split in it and we can look and see if this thing looks ridiculous. Oh, I see what longer. you mean. Yeah. We are gonna start with our two upper frame rails on this project and they are basically gonna follow the upper body line here. So we're gonna start there, come on down, come on back up and end there. Same with the other side. And then we're gonna match it with a lower frame rail and then we're gonna build trusses uh, to basically bridge the two together. So we're going to be using our Rogue Fab Bender, which we love so far. We built the uh, trophy cart completely with the Rogue Fab Bender, but it was intended to be used with an air compressor, and we finally got a halfway decent one in here. And some of you guys are going to see this and wonder what's going on. Well, our little shed is getting a huge upgrade. Langmuir Systems sent us their Crossfire Pro, which is a plasma table, a CNC plasma table. So I haven't quite finished putting it together yet, uh, and I, of course I need to learn the software, but we're going to be able to print out all kinds of uh, cool bracketry and just other custom pieces that are going to look way more professional than uh, cutting stuff out by hand like we have done in the past. I went way further into the uh, curve than, than the first one, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right, so this is what's going to join our frame rails together. You know, it would almost be cool to have an exo exoskeleton here. Yeah. That could be our dual exhaust right there. I think it's going to work. Uh, we just got to figure out where to trim this thing up at. And then we can kind of tack things together and try to fit the body over it. Sounds good. We went with the dual frame rail action there. We doubled, doubled them up because it would be stronger than just a single one inch frame. Yeah. All right, dude. One in with this frame rail and it appears to fit. I think I'm fine with it being kind of at the bottom of the door. But it's still covered by the plastic, so. It's still covered by the plastic. We're gonna have drop floors in this thing, so I'd like to try to keep this down kind of low so we don't have to have so much bend on the, yeah, the on, drop on floors. Yeah, on support for the drop floor. Yeah. Such cute, dainty spindles. Let's put them on the cross cart. Ow! Man, I don't know, that looks like a winner to me. That looks pretty good. I think it's a good start. I think we can go ahead and just work on, uh, we can, I'm pretty sure we can weld it up the rest of the way and then uh, work on suspension? Yeah, man. We're getting there. Now 
now that the chassis is done for our four-wheel drive Bronco go-kart build, it's time to move on to mounting the power plant. We are going to be using a Tillotson 228cc engine from GoPowerSports.com. We chose this engine because it's very stout for its size. Uh, it, it's claimed to make 23 to 24 horsepower. It revs to like 8,500 or nine grand or something crazy. Uh, and it's very lightweight and the fuel consumption is really good too. So, I mean, I don't know, what is that? Maybe 35, maybe 40 pounds. And look how compact it is. It's gonna fit right in between our frame rails here and we should be able to make it fit under the hood with no issues at all. And the whole goal with this is to keep it lightweight because while this is a decently powerful engine at 23 horsepower, um, if we add a whole lot of weight to this thing, it's going to get slow and we want it to be fast. So you can check out these parts at a link in the description of this video. Check out the video we, uh, we made when we put this engine together. Uh, you can check it out right here and uh, let's figure out how we're gonna mount our engine. We have an engine plate also from gopowersports.com. It's very convenient. It bolts up right to the bottom of this engine and then we can figure out how we're going to attach that to our chassis. Man, I think it's time to pop the hood on this bad boy and see what she's uh, packing. All right. Ugh. All right. Man, there's nothing in there. Not for long. All right, dude, I'm, I'm thinking We'll remove this dash so we don't hurt anything. And but the rest of this stuff has got to go because we got to be able to get access to the metal chassis so we can weld in our plate. And then we'll worry about this stuff later. Sounds good. All right. Having way too much fun with that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, work on it. yanking it. Yanking the that. Uh, all I need to do is just kind of get it out of the way. So the steering wheel is gonna have to go. When y'all assembled this, did y'all have to assemble the whole thing, or was it mostly together? I had to put the steering shaft and wheel on. Had to put the wheels on it. I gotta say that this thing is way low on power. Yeah. It's, it's only got six volt battery in it and just the dinkiest little electric motor you could ever imagine. It wouldn't even push John in a straight line. And we all know I wear a, a kid's medium shirt, so. So, so it's, a, it's just severely down on power. Um, if you have a kid that just can't drive and, and they want to go fast and, and you're afraid of that, this would probably be perfect because they can't go anywhere with this thing. But it's going to make a cool 4x4. Uh, four four. Alright, this don't make no sense. There it is. Oh man, I can just unplug the whole thing right here. That's cool. Bam. Dude. Easy peasy. All right, man, I think I'm gonna start small. I'm gonna cut along here, up here and around here. And just kind of get rid of this whole piece. Then we can see the frame when it's in there and we can weld in cross braces for the uh, engine plate. Where is our engine plate? There's our engine plate and it's massive. Yeah, they beef those things up since last time I yeah, checked. But it's, You're not gonna crack one of those. It's massive. Yes, we can trim it down a little bit. It's time for an engine plate for this thing. We need to figure out where the engine plate's gonna go and how, is it, how it's gonna mount on the chassis. Well, 
This is heavy duty, which would be awesome, but it's extremely heavy. If you wanted to put a bunch of horsepower down and you don't want anything to bend, this is the way to go. But we are going lightweight with this and I'm kind of leaning towards this engine plate. It's way lighter and it's way adjustable. It, it will adjust forward and backwards and side to side, which is gonna give us plenty of wiggle room with our engine. Like a glove, dude. It did banana a little bit. <laughs> I don't think I cut it enough, dude. But, you know, we'll get it. I know it's not gonna fit, but I just got to see. Dude, it cannot get. Look, look at how tight it is. That is meant to be right there. That is meant to be. All right, so I can get it closer forward. That's pretty much it, dude. So we need to go ahead and decide like how far down we're gonna go with this thing, or. Or if this is it. Yeah. Well, what we might be able to do is reposition our torque converter. You know how they're... It, yeah, it can go further down. Yes. And then we also just get a new intake manifold that curves. Uh-huh. And that might be our ticket into somewhat getting that to fit. We need stickers that say 228 and not 302. Yep. We know the body is not perfectly square on our chassis, too. We're going to make those adjustments later on. Yeah, it's just plopped up there right now. It's not even fit on there all the way. The back is so tight that it's not, <laughs> it's not pushing down all the way. Oh, she's a little hiked up. We're almost to the point of mounting the engine, but I really want it lower in the chassis so we can try to fit the factory hood back on without a crazy cowl induction modification. <laughs> but we really need some permanent wheels and tires for this thing. We were originally thinking of going with the eight inch wheels that we talked about from Go Power Sports, but they're just gonna be too large. Like we have these old dingo tires and wheels mocked up on the back. That's an eight inch, eight inch wheel on what, an 18 inch tall tire, something yep. like that. And it's just too big. And these tires we have mocked up on the front are going to be too small. We have a six inch rim on a, what, a 12 inch, 13 inch tire. It's just gonna look funny. Once we get some permanent wheels and tires in here, we can figure out how low the engine can go without interfering with our steering and front suspension and all of that stuff. I have to say this project is very ambitious. This is the smallest power wheels. What, this is one of the smallest power wheels vehicles and we're going for uh, big power, we're going for four wheel drive, the whole package. In a lightweight package. In a lightweight, in a lightweight chassis, exactly. So uh, it should be really mean when it's done, but we're just at the point where we need more parts. Uh, so thanks for watching guys. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram in between episodes to uh, for sneak peeks on what we're up to. Pick up one of our new t-shirts or one of our new hats at our website, cars cameras dot com leave a thumbs up don't forget if you're buying go-kart or mini bike parts use our sponsor gopowersports.com and let them know that cars and cameras sent you ike yeah check me out at isaac it'll be fine on to the trophy cart yes sir catch you next time all right guys it's time for this shelf to go because we got to make room for other equipment and uh we've known about the bad termite problem but it's real bad <laughs> They're scurrying. Well, we gotta treat it. Yeah, we gotta treat the building. Burn pile. Say hello to my little friend. Termite.
they didn't like this board too much. Termites like really soft wood. They really like this fast growing pine that we build our houses out of now. That's why I like older houses. You get a lot of grain in the wood and if you pay attention to termites, they always go for, and you can see it right here, they're in there too. They go in between the grains. And so when you got them all close together like that, they don't like it. They go after the uh, this wood right here. We have a sledge here or no? Be a nice piece. 